before we get to Arizona and where you're at now, it certainly worked out with you this past year with Denver, signing with them, winning a Super Bowl ring, which is every player's goal. But what happened in Philadelphia? I mean, you, you were at the height of your career. You were playing as well as you had ever played. And suddenly, I know there was a contract issue there, but suddenly they, they cut you. What, what happened in Philadelphia? Well, I was just um... – I was at the point where, you know, I had I thought I'd been out playing my contract for, you know, every year of the contract, which was the three that I had played of it. Um, and they had offered an adjustment uh, the year prior. And uh, Chip, then, Chip and his regime then also became in control of the front office stuff. And, and when we went back to revisit the, that offer, they said they didn't know that about that one. There was kind of a disconnect in the front office there um and, and things just things weren't really going in the right direction in philly at that time and, and I, I i got to the point where i said if i'm not going to get paid what i'm worth i'm going to try to try to get out of here and you know, so i just didn't attend the voluntary stuff and you know i was scheduled you know, i had my flight booked for the the first bond uh, the first mandatory uh deal which was the mini camp um, in June of last year, uh, and they cut me the weekend before that. So, um, you know, then it was a more than a half later before I. Oh, well, it's actually over two months later, two and a half months later that I signed with Denver. Evan, kind of researching for this interview, I think it's safe to say you're not a huge Chip Kelly fan. I found an email <laughs> exchange you had with Nine News in Denver. You said this, quote, there were many things that Chip had done that showed me he wasn't building a championship team. Two of the main issues that concerned me were, one, a never-evolving vanilla offense that forced our own defense to play higher than normal play counts. Two, his impatience with certain personality types, even when they were blue-chip talents. You went on to say the Broncos team I was on would have eaten Chip alive. I don't think he could have handled the plethora of large personalities now he's out in philadelphia now he's already landed in san francisco but uh didn't didn't end well with you and him it sounds like yeah i mean i was uh, chip's, a, chip's a smart guy and, and early on i liked his methods i liked the way that some of his staff communicated uh what they were doing and why they were doing it but over the course of their tenure there there was really not much evolution i thought it was really we were really regressing when we should have been taking steps forward um, and he wasn't, it didn't seem like he wanted to listen to the feedback of the people around him, uh, when it really, when it came to anything. Um, and that's what I was referring to when I was talking about that stuff. So here you are, 2015, an all pro player available. Of course, I know it was as much about you finding a team where you were a good fit as a team wanting you to play for them. You decided on Denver. It worked out like a bowl of cherries. Um, To get to go there, even though it was not a full season and it's only one and done, but to win a Super Bowl, to close it out with Peyton Manning, how special was that? It was unreal. Um, It it could not have worked out any better than it did. I signed there. It was the third week of – preseason so I, I was able to skip training camp which probably was good for the body um i had to learn the offense on the fly but uh and then i had to battle some injuries during the year but you know my, my time in denver was it was just it was awesome all around other than that uh it's, it's, it was a great city to play full of great people the organization uh, was really run well had a lot of great guys on the team uh, a lot of just really great players who you know were all in it you know for one common goal and just from start to finish, it was a hell of a ride. You know, Evan, I hate to call you a late bloomer because when I covered you at Alabama, you were – I remember you being 285, 90 pounds then. I mean, strong. In fact, I still think at the Combine you have more 225 reps than any former Alabama player still today, 35 reps. I still think that's the most by any former Crimson Tider. But you kind of have been a late bloomer. In high school, uh, 240 pounds, even though you were a state 6A wrestling champion. And you know what some people said. I, Alabama's taking him because he's Bob Baumhauer's nephew. He's not a great player. You redshirted. You bumped around on the offensive line. Great friendships with, with Smiley and, and Britt, but they were more highly touted. Uh, then you go to the NFL. Uh, 
drafted by Carolina in the third round, stuck there for a few years, didn't last long with the Dolphins, kind of came into your own with the Bengals, and then later in your career with the Eagle, Eagles, you, you blossom as a great player. And now at, at 34 years of age, you like you're in your prime. What do you attribute that to? Uh, the fact that you, I guess, first of all, you feel like you probably had a, uh, a chip on your shoulder feeling like you always had to prove something, but the, the as you've gotten older, you've played better football. I think I really was just I've always worked to get better every day and had to I had to be uh resilient when it came to a lot of things uh and relentless as well. Um you know, I was dra- drafted in the third round as a guard that's, that's pretty high for a it guard. Is. You know, a lot's expected out of you. Um I played you know, one year of left guard in college. Uh been coming into the league. I was I was very raw. You know, I got kind of got by on my strength and athleticism uh in college. And my, the technical aspect of my game wasn't as really refined. I mean, when I got to Carolina, um, I was playing right guard. Uh, they didn't really play much my rookie year. Um, I was still trying to come into my own. And I was always working hard, and staying stronger than everyone, and doing whatever I had to do. Uh, the second year, I was able to start 15 games. Uh, and then after that season, the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach uh, were fired. The new guys moved me to tackle, so I made the team the next year as a backup tackle. The next year they moved me to center, so I was third string center all of training camp before they cut me. Uh, after the end of training camp, Miami picked me up, and I uh, was rotating at right guard for seven games. Uh, they cut me. Uh, Cincinnati picked me up for the remainder of that season, and then the next season with Cincinnati, um, I was able to start seven games before I had a high ankle sprain uh, and ended up rotating time when I came back I was I had a pretty good season when I was playing then uh, and then the next year it was like June uh, workouts and things like that and I, I tore my calf so I was recovering from that and a week late starting training camp and kind of I was, I was behind there and played maybe 100 snaps that enti- the entire 2010 year um, and then that's the next off season was the year of the lockout, uh, and when it when the lockout was over, is when I signed with Philly, um, and I had been working really hard the entire. It was like a twenty six, twenty seven week, you know, training process where I was just working the entire time. I got in really good physical condition. Uh, it was just my mentality was right. I signed with Philly, and I had a great year, and haven't looked back since. But overall, the late bloomer because I was kind of a raw a raw talent, and then. Timing is crucial in the NFL. And there's some guys that end up in great situations. There's some guys that end up in bad situations. But, you know, I just had to stick through whatever I was presented with, um, learn to keep growing up uh, as a person and a player, and just keep making myself better. And I just, you know, I've always kept doing that. All-Pro Offensive Guard Evan Mathis is our guest here on the Gary Harris Show on Tide 99.1. All guests come to us courtesy of the Bud Light Hotline presented by Adams Beverages. You mentioned that you were unrefined coming out of college. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that it seemed like you were playing for a different coach every year. We look at Alabama now with Saban and we're like, wow, you know, it's uh, it's just win, win, win. But when you came in, man alive, uh, you went through a lot. You signed with Dubose. Now, granted, he was coming off a, an SEC championship season in 99. You signed in 2000. You're redshirted. Uh, then Bama goes 3-9. and nine. He's out. Franchoni comes in. Everybody holds the rope. Uh, it seems like it's going in the right direction. 2002 really had a good football team, a really good football team. But then he bolts for A&M. Shula comes in. You're going through head coaches, offensive line coaches. Uh, it was quite a – tumultuous time at the University of Alabama but uh, you hung in there I know you're proud that that's your alma mater and proud of what you accomplished but talk about that what's that like when you're playing college football and you're at a program where it seems like the only constant is change yeah it was it was it was weird um, just watching Alabama you know I grew up a diehard Alabama fan so seeing Alabama the years before I got there I'm watching Sean Alexander Chris Samuels uh, watching really a really good team, uh, and like you said, they won the SEC championship in '99. Um, that's when I, I committed there, that was, uh, and then 2000, I get there, and it's three and eight. Debose is gone, and it's like, wow, you know, this is not what we expected. And, and Franchoni comes in, and I think I think the Debose staff had me projected as a center. The, uh, 
and that's where I was playing in the early, early on with, with Francione before they moved me to tackle. Um, and, and with Francione's system, the, you didn't play one side. You, the tackles and guards, they switched sides based on the formation. So I was able to you know, develop left and right tackle abilities under Francione. Um, and like you said, in 2002, we had a great team, uh, and we would have gone to the SEC championship, but we were on probation for recruiting violations from the staff before, uh, which was no fun. So, you know, we scheduled our own bowl game pretty much with the, with the game in Hawaii at the end of the season, two seasons in a row. I um, want to go ahead. I'm sorry, Evan. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was, you know. Well, I was going to ask you about a guy that not that not a lot of people remember uh, because he was here on Franchoni, but the late Jim Bob Held user. I, I got to know him yep. pretty well, really liked him. And I remember one time asking him about, you know, technique and, you know, zone block. He said, what technique? He said, your offensive lineman. There's a guy in front of you. You line up, you you know, you, you blow him off the damn ball. We run for first down. That's that's all there is to offensive line play. Talk about that guy. He was a colorful character, wasn't he? Yeah, Jim Bob, Jim Bob Held user was an awesome man. Um, he really knew how to get the best out of his line. Um, you know, it was, the line we had under him was uh, Good. myself, Justin Smiley, Wesley Brett, Mariko Portis, Alonzo Ephraim. Um, and, and we were just all playing smash mouth football. Like, like you said, he would, just, you know, he'd tell us where to go, and just tell us to smash, or just smash those guys, and we would. And we had a lot of fun. He was a uh, he was a great guy. He always knew how to talk to guys differently based on you know the personality type. Um, you know how to communicate well with guys and have just absolutely get the most out of guys. Evan, as you moved on to the NFL, how how important was it and how big a factor was it for you to have an uncle in Bob Baumhauer that had played for so many years, had been to Pro Bowls? Uh, did he mentor you at all in your quest to become an NFL player? He was, he was always very supportive. Um, I never really he never really try to steer me in any one direction. He's just always been very supportive and, you know, uh, always caring about my career. Um, and also, it gives you a little confidence knowing that you, you have someone like that in your in your bloodline and that you do have the genetics to, to get it done, especially someone, you know, an all-pro defensive tackle you know, who was like 6'5", 275 and just shredded and fast. I figured if, you know, if that was in my genetics, I could, I could make it as an offensive line in the NFL. I'd say so. Evan Mathis, our guest. You can follow him on Twitter at Evan Mathis sixty nine. By the way, and and. Uh, I've been looking at your Twitter account. Of course, you're a family man now. Uh, you got a reputation for being quite a colorful character, and I think that started developing here at Alabama. But uh, you've got that uh, kind of dry sense of humor. Sometimes people don't know if you're joking or you're being serious, but you seem like a guy that enjoys life to me, not just as a football player. Your identity is not being a football player. As I said, you've got two children now. You've got a beautiful wife. Just talk about uh, Evan Mathis as a person and, and how you approach life and the fact that you seem to enjoy uh, pretty much everything that you do. Uh, yeah, that, that, that pretty much sums me up. Um, I'm, I'm very driven. I don't take too much seriously um, other than things that I commit to. Uh, I, I want to be a I'm a good father, a good husband. I want to be successful in, in, in things that I do. You know, I'm a, that's, those are my job. What's, that, what's asked of me? You know, and my jobs and things like that. But other than that, you know, I just really try to have fun in life. Um, we only get one shot at this. Uh, we don't know how long we're going to be here, so we might as well make the most of it. And uh, you know, just really cherish each day. You made some news a few years ago with some before and after pictures. You had a picture of you with the Bengals, and don't get me wrong, you're a big guy. You play in the NFL, but you weren't cut. You, you know, you were a little soft looking. Then a few weeks later, you got a picture looking like uh, you just competed in Mister Universe, and that kind of led to you um, founding Zone Athletic Performance there in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, what happened? What did you change in your training to take it from one level to the next level physically? Well, the um so I kind of, I was kind of eating a lot of food to prepare for that before and after because that was right when I opened my gym. And that before and after picture was, you know, that was part of a plan. So that was so by I, design a little bit. <laughs> it was by it was by design a little bit. So it was basically towards the end of the 2010 season. I wasn't playing much in Cincy, 
you know, I had committed myself to, you know, getting where I need to be the next off season. I, you know, just, I wasn't giving up or anything like that. I'm just, I'm always trying to do what I have to do to get better, maybe make some changes here and there. But I had just opened my training facility. So towards the last few weeks of the season, I started eating whatever. And since he went home to Alabama for a couple weeks after the season, and it's really easy to eat whatever down there. Um, so then I came back to Arizona. It was the second week of January, uh, 2011, and this is the year of the lockout. So uh, my trainer at the gym put me on a carb cycling diet, and I just I completely cleaned up my eating and followed the diet exactly how I was supposed to. Oh, and eight weeks later, I think I went from now, I went from 308 to 279 Woo. in eight weeks, and it was it was I mean I was I was working hard. I wasn't killing myself with my work. I was you know maybe working out an hour a day with a uh, and, and walking every now and then, jogging every now and then, but nothing crazy. It was it was more so just following the, the diet and eating clean that got that done. And after those eight weeks, 279, take the after picture. I'm not going to play NFL football on the offensive line at 279, so I started, you know, having to bulk back up. But, uh, you yeah, that know, that, that was eight weeks into the, the, the 26 or 27-week lockout year. So, you know, I had 18 more weeks on top of that of training before the 2011 season when I signed with the, uh, the Eagles. It illustrates how important diet is for these folks that kill themselves Absolutely. in the gym. you gotta, you got to – combo it up with that diet if you want to get results like that well it was good for your business and that thing has really taken off and great picture of you and the rock Dwayne Johnson where both of you are you know striking a pose there uh he worked out at the facility some I, I know you get a lot of former uh, or a lot of pro athletes and celebrities and, and everybody come in there at Scottsdale and work out at your place well that picture was actually in Philly when they were there for Monday Night Raw um and the rock came in to work out at the, the Eagles facility uh, we were just hanging out with him do a little lift with him and talking to him. He's a really good guy. But yeah, at the gym, we have we have all kinds of people coming to the gym. And uh, over the next, uh, soon over the next few months, we're going to try to roll out uh, online training so we can really expand our reach. All right, I know we got to wrap up with you. You got to get going with your day, and I got to get to a break. But I, I want to jump now to where you're at right now. You live in Arizona. I know you're blessed to get to sign a one year deal with the Cardinals. Good football team. Uh, Bruce Arians, a colorful head coach. You two ought to hit it off, probably already have. Uh, you got a one year contract. You're playing at home. Any thoughts on how much longer you want to play, Evan? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there'll be much after this. I'm focused on one year at a time, and I, I don't really have any. I don't know if there's anything that I really want me to play anymore after this. I might, so I might, I might call it a career after this season because I'm in a good opportunity here uh, with the Cardinals, a good team, to try to you know, finish on a very high note. You just won a Super Bowl. This team, a Super Bowl contender in your mind, Arizona? Absolutely, absolutely. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have signed there here if we weren't. Finally, Jay Coker. I know you probably don't know him well, but you got the Alabama tie-in. He didn't get drafted. He worked very hard to get drafted, but. Uh, Obviously, Carson Palmer is your, your starter. Drew Stanton's a backup. But Matt Barkley and, and Coker look like they may be battling for that third quarterback spot. Do you know anything about Coker? And have you had a chance to, to visit with him since he signed with Arizona? No, I haven't spent much time with him, but obviously I, I've watched him a lot in college. And uh, you know, I see that he's a fighter. So uh, he should fit in well around her, and uh, hopefully he can pick up the, the pro-style stuff pretty quickly and make something out of it. Final thought, uh, your opinion on, on Saban and what he's built here at Alabama. Um, there's really not words to describe how great he's done. It's, it's absolutely uh, brilliant dynasty-type material that he's laid out at Alabama. And it's done, it, obviously, that's done a lot for the program, the school. Uh, even us alum, are, you know, he allows us to walk around a little extra pride of our alma mater. Um, but what he's done, I mean, the guy is an incredible coach. Uh, he knows how to get guys to play together. Um, yeah, so he, he's just done an outstanding job. Evan Math, the Super Bowl champion, two-time Pro Bowler, first-team All-Pro in 2013, three-time Pro Football Focus All-Pro, first-team All-SEC in 2004. You've come a long way since winning the Class 6A State Heavyweight Wrestling Championship with the new kids on the block haircut, buddy. I can tell you that. <laughs> Appreciate the time, Evan. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Have a good one.